I'd like to welcome you to the Midweek Bible Study of the Mount Carmel Church. We are so glad that you are able to watch and to listen tonight. And uh, happy Independence Day. Tomorrow, I know, is the 4th of July, Independence Day, when we are praising the Lord for the freedom that we have. And, and just a great day to be together, maybe as friends, as family, or to, to call a friend or, or somebody, and just have some time together. But you know, it's Independence Day, and uh, the freedom that we so greatly enjoy uh, in this country. But also, as we look at freedom, I, I think of what Christ did for us on the cross. We have the freedom from the burden of sin. Well, tonight we want to continue our Bible study that we've been looking at in the book of 1 Thessalonians, entitled, In the Meantime. Tonight we're going to look at, at chapter 3, verses 1 through verse 13. I'm going to split it up into two different weeks, but uh, we're looking at this area of standing strong during trials. How many of you have trials in your lives? I think all of us would have to raise our hand and say, yeah, I have trials. I've had all kinds of difficulties in my life. Well, as Christians, as we look at that and as we look at this passage of Scripture, Paul is talking to the Thessalonian church and concerned about where they are because they were going through a lot of persecution and they were new believers and they were being kind of uh, under attack. But as we'll read tonight, they were standing strong in all that they did. But let's have a word of prayer as we start our, our, our evening service, our Bible study. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight. I thank and praise you for this night. We thank you for all that you've done for us, and we just ask for continued guidance in our lives. We pray, Lord, for those that may be going through a trial right now in their life, whether it's a, a physical trial such as health, or maybe just a, a time of burden has been laid on them from in their family or, or just in life, Lord. We pray that they would look to you. We pray that they would stand strong during the trial that's coming their way. We thank you for tonight. We thank you for our time that we can spend in your word. And Lord, as we look at this passage of Scripture, help us to apply it to our lives. Because it's so easy to get caught up in things today around us, Lord. And, and uh, help us to realize and to understand that you are with us. And you provide that comfort, that peace that only can come from you. We pray and thank you for our night tonight. We thank you for this time, even as we're celebrating Independence Day tomorrow, the freedom that we have and the freedom that we have to, to serve you, the freedom to, of religion, the freedom of so much in our lives, but also the freedom that your Son, Jesus Christ, gave to us through the cross and his shed blood. We thank you for all you do. We just pray for a great evening together. And we pray for our Bible study, Lord, for open hearts, for what you would have for us. And continued guidance in all that we do and all that we say. And we thank and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, as we, we look at this area of trials in our lives, you know, all of us will have trials. So we shouldn't be surprised when we encounter trials of all kinds of things in our lives. Maybe you're going through a trial right now. And in the midst of all those difficulties or trials, we must, in our own lives, continue to increase in love for people. As we continue to look for the return of Christ. What do you do when your world caves in? What does your life look like when there's those times in your life when you feel like the walls are caving in on you? Or how many times you, you, you say, well, I feel like I'm in a tunnel and I don't see any light at the end of that tunnel. Or maybe how does a Christian respond when hard times come? All of us will face those questions sooner or later in our lives. It may not be the way that we think it's going to happen. But we will go through deep trials eventually. And when that happens, everything we believe will be put on the line. Everything that we believe in and understand and have faith and trust in will be 
right there in front of us. Well, in the first nine verses of 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, Paul wrote to some new believers who suddenly find themselves in a way that there was some great difficulty. They were being persecuted for their faith, their faith that they had in Jesus Christ. And our text today, or our, our verses, show us how Paul reassured them and encouraged them to stand firm in their trial. So if you turn with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, I want to read verses 1 through verse 13. Therefore, when we no longer endure it, we thought it good to be left in Athens alone, and sent Timothy, our brother and minister of God, and our fellow labor in the gospel of Christ to establish you and encourage you concerning your faith, that no one should be shaken by these afflictions. For you yourselves know that we are appointed to this. For in fact we told you before when we were with you that we would suffer tribulation, just as it happened, and you know. And you know for this reason, when I could no longer endure it, I sent to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter had tempted you and our labor might be in vain. But now that Timothy has come to us from you and brought us good news of your faith and love, and that you always have good remembrance of us, greatly desire to see us as we also see you. Therefore, brethren, in all affliction and distress, we were comforted concerning you by faith. For now we live, if you stand fast in the Lord." For what thanks can we render to God for you, for all the joy with which we rejoice for your sake before our God, night and day praying exceedingly that we may see your face and perfect what is lacking in your faith. Verse 11. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love to one another and to all just as we do to you, so that he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. You know, what I want us to see tonight in our Bible study, and as we look over tonight and next week, six truths about the trials that can help us hang in there when difficult times come, because difficult times will come. We want to look at some truths about the trials, the trials that, and the difficulties in our lives. We want to look at six of them. Tonight we'll, we'll probably look at maybe four or five of them, I'm not sure. But we'll take a look at those and then next week we'll continue on. But what are the truths about our trials in our lives? The first one I want us to see in verses 1 through verse 3 are our trials are unsettling. They're unsettling, and we see that as Paul is pointing that out. You know, as we, we see just in those verses right prior to that, in verses 17 through verse 20 of chapter 2, let's just go back there for a minute. And let me read those, because Paul desperately wanted to go back and visit this young church at Thessalonica. And he wanted to, to visit that church. But some things had happened in his life and things had happened that blocked him from doing that. So let me just read verses 17 through 20 of chapter 2. But we, brethren, having been taken away from you for a short time in presence, not in heart, endeavor more eagerly to see your face with great desire. Therefore we wanted to come to you, even I, Paul, time and again, but Satan hindered us. For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? Is it not even you in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? For you are our glory and our joy. And then we, we see going into verse or chapter 3, verse 1, as he's missing seeing them because he, he can't get there and, and he... He, something took place that couldn't happen. We see where he says he was left in Athens alone, as we see at the end of verse 1. Or maybe your translation says, or best to be left by ourselves. It's a very strong phrase that is used here, and it 
literally means to be forsaken or to be left behind. Paul felt like he was orphaned from his fellow believers. And so he did the next best thing. He, he sent Timothy, as we see in this passage, to strengthen and encouragement and, and give them encouragement in their trials. That Greek word that we see in verse 3, that no one should be shaken, actually means to be unsettled. It has the idea of being so shaken by circumstances that they kind of flop back and forth, kind of like they're riding the fence and they're this way one day and this way the next day. And maybe some of you are going through some, some trials or pressures right now in your life that keep you maybe awake at night and make you feel wiped out during the day. They kind of make you feel like, well, I'm this way today and I'm that way tomorrow. A famous pastor that we hear on the radio said it this way, your particular trial doesn't matter as much as how you respond to it. Often we focus intently on the details of our difficulties, as if our problem was the most important thing in the world. It may seem so at the time, but it's not really. God is much more concerned with how we respond than with the trial itself. Think about that for a minute. He, he's concerned about how we respond to it more than, than the trial that we're going through because He is with us and and we should be Christ-like in that time of difficulty. I heard another pastor say it this way, God will take care of what you're going through. You take care of how you go through it. Are you unsettled maybe tonight? If so, you're not alone. But you don't have to stay that way. And it's helpful to remember the next truth that we want to see. Our trials are appointed by God. Our trials are allowed by God to happen in our lives. They, they are appointed, as it reads in verse 3, we are appointed to this. Or maybe your translation says, you, you know quite well that we are destined for them. The phrase that we see, in, in, that we are appointed, or we are destined, means to put or to place. It's a very strong way of saying, your hard times were placed here by God. You know, persecution doesn't happen without a purpose. It doesn't happen without a purpose because suffering does come. This verse teaches that trials are appointments, not accidents. That means that whatever trial or difficulty you're going through today or have went through in the past has been tailor-made for you by a Heavenly Father that loves you. He's not going to leave you. He's not going to walk away from you. It's to draw us closer to Him. He many times appoints tough times for our good and His glory. Listen to what I'm going to say very carefully. Everything that comes to you has already passed through the hands of God and has received His stamp of approval. Think about that for a minute. He has allowed something to take place in our lives. But He is there for us. To draw, to make us stronger, to draw us closer to Him. The third thing I want us to see in verse 4 is we should expect difficulties. Verse 4 of our passage says, For in fact, we told you before when we were with you that we would suffer tribulation just as it happened, and you know. You know, some people may regard this as something negative, something that, boy, I don't like that. But as I think about that, it's positive. Because it's better to expect to be stretched than to think that life will always be a bed of roses. I, I run into people all the time that say, well, I don't know why this is happening, or I don't know why that's happening. I thought my life would be like this, like a bed of roses. That's not what God's Word says. It says we will go through many difficulties, many trials, many tribulations, but to know that I am with you. You know, it reminds me kind of of what a co-worker once said to me. 
He said he didn't mind all the obstacles that he was running into in life as long as they don't get in his way. You know, trials are, the, are common to every Christian. No one is exempt. No one gets a trouble-free ride to heaven. Jesus puts it this way in Matthew chapter 24, verse 9. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12 says, Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. We will have suffering in our life, and suffering is a mark of discipleship, something that is guaranteed for the follower of Christ. The Christian life is not a quick fix. And many times I hear, well, I thought if I became a Christian, I, I would have this carefree life. It nowhere says that. And many times new, new Christians are sometimes confused when they think that everything should go perfectly that there should be no more difficulties in their lives. Some believers may even wonder if they're at fault. Why am I having these trials? Am I not doing something that I should? That maybe if they just had more faith, the hard times would go away. You know, when, you're, when you put your faith in Christ, you will experience pressures and persecution. Paul told the Thessalonians ahead of time that problems would come. Notice where it says there in verse 4, we told you before, or kept telling them. We could translate it this way. The warning was often on our lips. We often told you that it wouldn't be easy. He wanted them to be prepared, so he kept telling them that persecution was something that was going to happen. In Acts chapter 14, verse 22, it kind of says it this way, Strengthen the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith and saying, We must, through many tribulations, enter the kingdom of God. The fourth thing that we see in verse 5 is tough times can tempt us to give up. Verse 5 says, For this reason... When I could no longer endure it, I sent you to know your faith, lest by some means the tempter had tempted you, and our labor might be in vain. You know, one of Satan's main tools is to tempt us. To tempt us to bail on God, to bail out, to say, well, this is hard, I, I can't do this anymore. And when we think of that, we, we see that we are tempted in at least three ways. To doubt God's goodness. To doubt His goodness. The tempter whispers in our ear that God has forgotten us. That He doesn't care and that He isn't good. And of course to retaliate against others with anger and resentment. You know, this is one of His favorite tactics when our, heart, when our hard times involve problems with friends and family members, to give in to despair and discouragement. Or maybe when we're sick and we feel as if we're not going to get any better again. Or perhaps a time in your life when you feel rejected and alone. Or maybe a point in your life where you've lost a job and you feel that you're not qualified to do anything else. Paul was so worried that these new Christians would crumble that he sent Timothy to find out if they were still standing strong. We see that in our lives, many times, that when we are tempted, there's doubt put in our lives. We doubt God. We doubt who God is. The tempter puts in our lives, well, God doesn't care about you. Why would God care about you? He puts that doubt there. Or maybe we get to that point where we, re we retaliate. You know, I think all of us can admit that under pressure sometimes we can have bad habits. We can develop wrong attitudes and slide down the slippery slope of despair. 
but we don't have to let problems overtake us because we can overcome our trials by faith. You see in verse 6 where it says, But now that Timothy has come to us from you and brought us good news of your faith and love and that you always have good remembrance of us, greatly desiring to see us as we also to see you. You know, we can overcome the trials in our lives by faith. That verse 6 is, is great to hear because they had faith in who their Lord and Savior was. You know, this is the only time that Paul ever used the term good news outside of its regular meaning of preaching the good news of the gospel. The message about their spiritual status was so pleasing to Paul's ears that it was like listening to the gospel all over again. And I want you to notice that Timothy was sent to find out about their faith. And what Timothy brought back to Paul, he returned with a, a good report about their faith and love. Because their faith was strong and sure. Their love for one another and for the loss was evident. Faith had its focal point towards God, while love is exhibited to those around us. You know, these believers loved God with everything they had, and they loved their neighbors as themselves. They were living out the truth of Galatians chapter 5, verse 6. Let me read verse 6 of 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. Well, let me read Galatians chapter 5, verse 6 first. Just turn there with me. For a second, Galatians chapter 5, verse 6. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 6. Let me start in verse 5 of Galatians chapter 5. Galatians 5, verse 5. For we through the Spirit eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything but faith working through love. They were living out the truth of that Galatians 5, verse 6. They were showing love to others. Let me read now 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 6. And we're going to stop there tonight. We're going to continue looking at it next week and just the importance of prayer and the importance of understanding who we are in Christ, but willing to stand strong in those trials in our lives. But verse 6 says, But now that Timothy has come to us from you, and this is coming from Timothy, and brought us good news, this is coming from Paul, as Timothy came back to Paul. But now that Timothy has come to us from you, and brought us good news of your faith and love, and that you always have good remembrance of us, greatly desiring to see us as we also to see you. We're going to look next week at just in more detail about this, uh, this point that I just made about their faith and how important their faith is because we can also overcome our trials by faith. They had overcome their trials, what was happening in their life, by the faith that they had in who their Lord and Savior was. Let's close in a word of prayer tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for this night. We thank you for all that you've done for us. We thank you for the many blessings that you give to us. And Lord, help us to understand that faith has its focus on God. While love is exhibited to those around us, it comes from that faith that we focus on you. We thank and praise you for tonight, Lord. We thank you for our time together. Help us to stand strong in times of trials. Help us to stand strong when we're struggling through life. Standing strong is having faith and trust in who you are and how that you will lead us and guide us through everything. And you will never give us more than we can handle. I thank you for that. Lord, we thank you for our time in your word tonight. I pray for those that are watching and listening, Lord, for the remaining part of this week, that they would stand strong no matter what they're going through. 
And we thank and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to thank you tonight for watching and listening. And just as I said there as we were finishing up, faith has its focus on God. And love is exhibited through our lives through that faith that we have. How important that is in our lives. I pray that you are standing strong during trials. The only way we can do that is to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Do you know him today? Do you have faith and trust in who he is and who he can be in your life? I pray that you do. Thank you for watching and listening tonight, our midweek Bible study. And I pray that you have a great week. I pray that tomorrow would be a great day, Independence Day, a kind of a, a break in the week even more. And uh, I pray that you have a good time with your families or friends or whoever it may be that you come in contact with. And just a challenge to us. Can we show Christ, God's, can we be Christ-like tomorrow with those that we're around? But standing strong during trials. Thank you for watching and listening, and may God bless.